Now we assume that once baby comes along, we'll bounce back to our old normal selves. But if you're still feeling quite tired, you're getting sick more often or even losing hair, it is likely that you're suffering from postnatal depletion. Personal trainer Lorraine Scapins is back in the Harvey Norman Lounge to talk about her experience in the hope that it will help other mums. Good morning, Lorraine. Good morning, Mel. So we're not talking postnatal depression, we're talking no. postnatal depletion. Yeah. So when did you twig that you were suffering from this? I think what it was is after I'd had number three and we'd, I'd spent so long waking through the night, as you do, you know, um, the whole sleep deprivation. But once you'd started sleeping, even after six or seven months, I was still waking up tired. So that was definitely one of the first clues for me because mm -hmm. I just couldn't understand why I was still feeling so exhausted yeah. after a full night's sleep. Well, the fact that you had three children, they might have something yep. to do with it. Yep. That's what are some it. of the other symptoms? Some of the other symptoms can include, um, apart from that, that fatigue, is loss of hair, energy levels, always when you go back into your exercise women and often i found is that you can't push it to intense levels without getting sick so regular sickness and also other mums have said they'll get injured um, for no reason at all the physiotherapists can't work out why mm. you know and their injuries are prolonged so there's quite a few symptoms so how long does this go on for because i'm thinking i'm still i'm still depleted because i can't push myself and i get injured all the time yeah well they say up to 10 years oh yeah my youngest is 10 there we go so, good it is, and that's quite a shock for some mums. You know, I mean, can you imagine if somebody said to you that, that to you when you were pregnant, that it could take, you know, depending on how many children you have, 10 years, you'd be like, are you serious? Yep. But that's what pregnancies and the time after take out of us. It's a big toll. And they do not tell you that in the pregnancy manual, do they? No, that it could take they 10 don't. years to recover. So no. let's talk a little bit about rest. What do you think we should be aiming towards? I really do think that women now it doesn't sound much to people who get enough rest but 10 to 20 minutes a day complete rest a complete switch off um, so you know don't think about doing the housework try not to overdo anything and just sit down uh, not you know with a magazine rest take longer showers and also try and do it in intervals through the day you know five minute longer shower if you can in the morning mm -hmm. 10 minutes sit down after your lunch and that doesn't seem like much but it's actually quite hard to get that and you will know that if you've got three small children mm -hmm. who are under five running around you know what it's really good rest time if you sit down and watch the cafe yes it is it's perfect Very good time, rest time. Yep. and nutrition also obviously plays an important role in this yes definitely see when we're pregnant uh, we've built up stores up until, you know, in our 20s or 30s until we get pregnant. So we start off our first pregnancy with great nutritional stores. Then after the first pregnancy, everything starts to get depleted. So it drops down and then we go into another pregnancy. Levels are dropping down again. And this is what we don't realize. So we're on this downward um, drop with our nutrition and we're never building it back up. So nutrition plays a big part and we've really got to make sure that we're eating well to get through those testing years, you know, those first before the role at school, um, at the start, you know, that primary mm. level, and then it's different again later on then. So what should we be looking at to help get our nutrition levels where they need to be? <laughs> Just um, eating regularly, um, looking what we eat, making sure that we're eating carbohydrates, protein and fat at each meal, Watching what we're grabbing when we're tired, you know, mm -hmm. not just going for the piece of fruit, the sugar, which as females we do tend to do, try and make sure there's good healthy fats and protein in there, whether it's nuts, you know, cheese and crackers right, is fine in the afternoon. And just so just for mums to be aware of that and what we're snacking on and hydration. And also don't figure out, don't figure that just hoovering up the children's <laughs> leftover fish fingers counts as dinner, does it? No, it definitely doesn't. doesn't. So um, yeah. how does a new mum know when she is back up to full speed and, and back into her normal routine? I, I think what they've got to look for is that definite fatigue. Once the fatigue starts to go and they're feeling more energised, what I tend to say to mums is to not do any intensive exercise until they're sleeping for six hours continuous. And what do you count as intensive? Um, so you're obviously pushing, very yourself, fit. Yeah. pushing yourself over 80%. You know, we can moderate exercise is fine during mm -hmm. this period, it is easy to moderate, and that's just feeling where you're comfortable exercising. So it's aerobic, you're yeah. building up a sweat, but you're not going into that 
pushing yourself to extreme because that can definitely increase fatigue and tiredness levels. And at this time okay. in our lives, we don't really need No, we don't. Well. We get enough of no. that in other places so that yeah. you get for your tiredness levels. Yeah. Lorraine, thank you so much. Uh, that has been enlightening, actually, postnatal depletion. Good